Ever thought about building your own AI friend or virtual companion or virtual waifu? Anyways, whatever you're whatever you're into. Um, here's a code base for you to get started on that. Um, it's got uh, messages history, memory. It's got you know when the messages are, are too long, it can summarize it so that you can you know save on tokens or it doesn't go over your tokens limit. Um, it can also keep track of a bunch of data points about who you are, so like your name, your likes, dislikes, your personality traits. Um, so this is the kind of memory that can be taken from one the messaging session to another. So it's more persistent than um, like the, the context uh, that's coming from uh, a messaging session. Um, so, you know, think about like how ChatGPT, you have like uh, different message threads and, you know, if you move to a new thread, the context is gone. So the entity's memory is kind of like, oh, you can bring a set of data points with the user everywhere you go. Um, it's kind of like how when you talk to your friend, like, like they don't have to ask you every time like what your name is and, you know, whether or not you're an introvert or extrovert, that kind of memory. Anyways. Um, so I just want you, you, you guys to like just dig into the, to this code base, um, play around with it. All you have to do is look at the README. So um, first thing is you gotta create, clone it, and then create a virtual environment, and then activate the environment, install the dependencies, set up your OpenAI API key in a .env file, and then start the script. Um, so this, this is how it's, it works. Um, so let's clear this out um, and then run the main.py file. So I can say like, hello. And then this is the, the prompt. Um, right now, if you're not familiar, this is the verbose um, mode in Langchain. Um, so which means you can see like the, the prompt behind the AI agent. So this is what it looks like, you know, it's, it's, this is the default problem that I gave it. My friends is, you know, this 25 years old, um, a beat, blah, blah, blah. And my friend knows the summary of our conversation, past messages and the entity data points that I just mentioned. So, um, yeah, so here, hold on. So this is the prompt that we were just looking at, and it looks shorter because this was created with a prompt template from Langchain. And then from a prompt template, you slot in information. So you slot in the entity data points, you slot in the summary and the message history, and then it becomes a prompt for the agent. And think about this agent is that it's actually two agents. So here, let me explain that. If you go to the main.py file, um, you as a user, okay, so let me just say, I don't want verbose, and then I'm gonna run this again. Hello there. General Kenobi. Uh, so this is the first agent talking. Actually, this is the first agent talking. And the first agent is the AI companion that receives the companion prompt template that we were just looking at. So it'll take your input and it'll say something somewhat, you know, intelligent back to the user. And then there's another agent here, which is called the user profile updater. And there's a, there's a custom class to instantiate this as well. You just have to dig into the code and you'll find it. It's pretty great. Um, yeah, so what this agent does is whenever I say something like, my name is Chris, then it will go behind the scenes and it will update the entity's data point about me. In this case, my name. Um, and the reason why it's running like this is because, you know, it's got the first agent running here and then the second agent running here is because uh, I used threading. So because we we're calling the LM in two separate calls, we don't wanna wait 
for one until we run the other because they don't depend on each other. I can, as a user, I can type in a query and then the, the companion agent could send me a response back right away. That's great, that's, that's great user experience. And then the second agent, if it deems that the information that I just provided requires it to update the database, then it will do that concurrently. So this is not parallel. Um, it feels parallel because like it feels like it's both running at the same time, but it's actually not parallel computing. It's concurrently. So actually the CPU is running, just jumping back and forth between these two. Um, so yeah, so we don't have to wait for one or the other. Um, by the time I receive this, this has also been done. So that's great. And in order to accomplish that, you use threading. So this is how you use threading. Um, and if you want to like add more stuff to this code base, you can, or like more things to do while the user waits for the main respond, then you can also add more code here using this syntax. Um, and how, I want to talk a little bit about how the second agent work, because this is the interesting part. This is actually uh, behind the scenes. It's a OpenAI functions agent. So OpenAI came out with an update a couple of weeks ago where you can give an LLM query uh, a set of functions, a predetermined functions and their, their names and their um, purposes. And then the, the OpenAI API endpoint will send back to you based on your query, which function you should be using in which order. So all this function, all this agent that I have here does, which is initialized by Langchain's built-in initialized agent um, method. And you, of course, you can go in here and dig into the code and see what it looks like. All it does is it receives the user query. This is the same time as the other agent and decides whether or not to run this one tool which is to update the entities database. And when I say database, I just mean like a dictionary because uh, everything in here is in memory. And if you want to like expand on this code base and maybe you throw in like a Redis database because it's also keys and values, then you can build your own like, you know, implementation of Redis and then replace this with Redis. Um, that's why I separate everything into files so you can like use this as a starting point. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's the second agent. The second agent just kind of like decide whether or not is, does this person need information update right now? No? Okay, so we'll skip. But if they do, then this agent actually knows what to extract from the user's query. So in this case, it extracted Chris out into, uh, into, let me find it. Where is it? Into here. So into name. So basically Chris will go in here. Yeah. And then I'll say something like, uh, I like uh, pasta a lot. I love it. So what happens behind the scenes is that in memory, my likes, likes has been updated, right? So this would go in here, pass that would go in here. And then once you're done with this session, you can, if you have persistent data databases, um, you can hop onto another section and then this entity's dictionary or data structure will go with the user to a new session. And then they don't have to tell the AI like their name and the likes, dislikes again. Um, yeah, so that's what entities is for. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so jump into the, the code base. Um, all you have to do is, you know, do all these steps in the readme. And um, also I want to mention that um, this is just the beginning of uh, a, a series of, I guess, AI agents specific um, tutorials, walkthroughs and code like this. And um, we're actually building a course uh, to, to help people um, build, you know, somewhat production ready AI agents, um, full stack AI agents, basically. So from, you know, your, your backend with like Python, Langchain and OpenAI or other LLMs 
and then your front end most likely will be like you know Next.js, React, um, some sort of like streaming capabilities between the two, uh, and then we'll we'll deploy it into a, a very lightweight kind of um, uh, deployment or DevOps system, maybe Heroku, because like you know you don't want to you you want to be thinking about how to make your AI agent more intelligent as opposed to like spending a couple of weeks on DevOps stuff if we're going to be doing AWS. That's something that could be a separate course or something that you can expand on your, by, on, in your own time. So watch out for that. Um, we'll, we'll be putting on a, a, wait, a wait list for that soon. And the course will probably come out in like maybe a week, two weeks. Uh, it's almost done. So yeah, exciting times. Um, so go check out the, the code base for this. Um, I hope you find this to be useful. Uh, just ignore my um, commit messages. I, I, I don't think when I do that. So anyways, um, yeah, what else did I have to say? Um, what else? Is there anything else I have to say? Um, I don't like uh jumping ropes what do you know about me now i know that you love pasta and you're not a fan of jumping ropes <laughs> yeah that's about it um let me know what you think in the comments and um like and subscribe i guess i have to say that like and subscribe and Watch out for more content, and this course is going to be coming soon. So uh, stay tuned.